was done in collaboration with Javier and Unai and also with the Inca and uh, the, with the team of Porto and uh, the University of Portugal is it's a private university. So by, by the moment everyone knows this here and uh, in our opinion this is for the, the best uh, remote lab and probably the most widely used uh, all over the world and uh, as being a, a remote lab it implies some physical distance between the user and the experiment and which means that it has to be and there has to be a communication channel between them also it allows for real measurements in real time which really this is the base of a remote lab the vizier in its basic uh, configuration as you also might know has got a triple DC uh, power supply function generator, an oscilloscope, a multimeter, and uh, now actually it uh, may have two multimeters, as the, the, early, the, the latest version, and also some content boards. So this is an overview of uh, our system at uh, ESEC. Uh, we've been using it for uh, two years now, and uh, we've reached more than 2,000 students at the moment. And uh, this 2,000, this number represents. Oops. This number represents uh, a number of uh, 10 courses that we've been integrating this year. So just to give you an idea of, of uh, uh, what we've been doing with this year at Porto. Um, we started last year in the first semester uh, using this year in just one course with more than 500 students and several teachers. And uh, then in the second semester, we changed a little bit our strategy and we decided to cover a bigger number of courses, six courses, different backgrounds, different kinds of, of students, number of students involved, and of course a different number of students of teachers also enrolled in each course. This, this um, uh, study represented a number of over a thousand students that would be engaged at the same time using this year. So, this was quite challenging because uh, there was a very uh, big need, need of uh, defining, uh, defining very well, very well the, what the teachers wanted and what we could offer. So, uh, the, the teachers defined the experiments they did <coughs> with associated learning goals, but we had to enter, and uh, when I say we, I mean, I mean the, uh, the system administrators, we had to enter in a kind of negotiation with them because we had some limited number of uh, component boards, only four component boards, and also, this is one characteristic of this here, uh, some type of experiments, as we will see later, uh, cannot be performed in this year. So we have to, we have to change some of the, the uh, configuration the teachers wanted by the beginning in the beginning. So one of these uh, needs led us to uh, propose the use of the remote lab we, we, we developed in-house uh, called Remote Elect Lab. And uh, this lab uh, allows for uh, the analysis, analysis of uh, a more com complete and complex electric circuit. So what is remote like that? So it is based on an NI Pelvis platform. It's, a, it's got a generic interface, not depending on the circuit and the face. So it's a, an easy one to, to use. Uh, the, the type of equipment <coughs> that uh, includes is similar to this here, as you can see from that list. And it's got uh, the interface that's got two uh, special zones. One zone for the readings, so the measurements the system does, and one zone for the matrix configuration. Just an, as an example, this is the control area for the oscilloscope and the readings for the signal generator, the top uh, areas for the voltage and current measurements, 
and oh, sorry, and the last is the controls of the switching matrix. This is one example of one circuit mounted in a electric, remote electric lab. Uh, this this remote electric lab uh, has got a different uh, purpose, different aim than this year's. Uh, it's focused on data analysis, so it means that the, the teacher has to determine very well what he wants the, the students to, to measure and the, the, the alternatives, the hypothesis they want to have. So uh, it ha he has to configure it, all these hypotheses previously. And that's different from this year. So from all this uh, study we did, we found out three problems. One first problem was about the ammeter location in a circuit. Uh, well, I suppose everyone knows that uh, uh, when mounting a circuit in a lab, the, if you want to measure the current in a, a branch, you can put the, the ammeter before and after the resistor in the same branch. So, uh, to, in order to do this, uh, and to learn with this, students are to be able to make mistakes, are to allow to make mistakes. Therefore, um, mounting a kind of circuit with all these hypotheses in this year uh, means that we have to use all the, the places possible to, to, look, to place the ammeter with uh, the short circuit in order to, for them to make the mistakes and, and see uh, if uh, it's wrong or it's right. So, uh, for that reason, we, uh, uh, we uh, well, for that reason, <coughs> since, sorry, since in uh, our system, the circuit uh, chosen by the teacher wasn't, uh, well, needed more nodes than the ones we have available in our system. So we decided to make a, a proposal and that proposal meant that we had to limit the number of places the yard meter was put up in. So this means that uh, we are preventing the students of uh, making measurements correct measurements in some of the natural places to put the ammeter. Uh, the ammeter. So when the student uh, ma made a possible po correct position, the students will, will, will get a wrong, um, error uh, message. But the problem was that uh, they wouldn't be able to identify because they're, they're students with with little knowledge in the electric circuits, they wouldn't be able to identify to identify if the, the placement was a correct placement or a wrong placement. Okay, so the error would come around because not because of a wrong placement, but because of the limitation of the circuit. That place wasn't that location wasn't uh, previously uh, uh, available. Okay, so how would, did we solve this uh, problem? How this, was this able to be solved? Of course, it was able to be solved with extra components, but also with a lot of collaboration between the institution uh, that are using this easier, with an um, exchange of knowledge, and with a very active visitor community and with, with the help of the uh, inquiry team. Okay. So the second problem was about the delayed readings. Uh, the, the problem came about with the, the, the need of uh, tracing the, uh, the charge and this, the charging and discharging curve of a capacitor or a coil. What happened is that uh, when you want to study this uh, phenomena, you want to make 
uh, readings in certain time periods and subsequent time periods. As you know, this year it gives you instantaneous readings. So this this type of um, this experiment cannot be implemented at present with this year. So in order to solve this, we decided to develop our second version of a remote light lab where we can manage, we can handle this kind of measurements, like as you can see, and with these values, with these readings, we can trace the graphical uh, <coughs> behavior of the <coughs> capacitor or the coil. So finally, the last problem that already has been uh, talked about this morning was about the readings of an uh, uh, average DC component, component of an AC signal. So if one do, does that with, the, with this here, one gets wrong measurements. Why? Once again, because it's related to the instantaneous measurements the readings that this year gives. Also, this problem is associated with the voltmeter used in the system and the way the system handles the hardware. So uh, this was also already overcome and it was overcome simply by reconfigured <coughs> these uh, variables. Okay, so it was a uh, simple to solve it. What have we learned? with this particular problem. We've learned that we have to be prepared for every eventuality. No one was expecting that a kind of error like this would happen. So also, we learned that sometimes remote lab equipment doesn't really behave like the equipment in the lab. And also that the architecture implementation uh, may affect the results we're getting. Okay, so as a conclusion, remote clubs are still a complementary solution. Uh, we learned with these exper experiences that users will always have requirements, requirements and issues we, have, we haven't thought about it. And also that uh, this is a fact that all experiments should be tested beforehand. And uh, that tutor assistance in this case is really critical, mainly for students that don't have a lot of knowledge in these areas. Also, uh, some experiments like the one I showed you may require some customized solutions and the uh, remote labs nowadays still uh, exhibit some limitations. So what should be done? Constant improvement, of course. Uh, we think that uh, this improvement <coughs> may gain from uh, students' uh, feedback and from teachers' feedback. And uh, of course, the constant improvement will be more dynamic if we maintain a very active, busier community.